Sports. Pierce here with Electric Bike Report, and today we have the Event and Level. The Event and Level is great for shortening ETAs and increasing speeds on your daily commute or simple ride. A lot of bikes that are class three claim they have a 28 mile per hour top speed and a 20 mile per hour throttle speed, but it's rare that that's actually the case. With this bike, you can easily get above that 28 mile per hour top speed. When it comes to the throttle, that is a true 20 mile per hour throttle to get you up to speed quickly. In simple turns, this bike can move. Let's get on with the review. So you probably heard me talk about the speed of this bike in our intro. So what makes the event and level so fast? Well, for starters, it has a 750 watt motor that can sustain 500 watts of power regardless. In simpler terms, this motor is always gonna hover above that 500 watts and it's capable of up to 750 watts of power. You also have a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery on this bike. That is gonna get you a lot of charge life and make sure the battery doesn't deplete when you are in those higher assist levels. Moving on to our other electrical components, you have an LCD display. It's a very simple, easy to read display. It's backlit, so if you're riding at nighttime, you're still going to be able to see it. This display shows us everything that we need to see from the battery percentage, to the speed, to the trip miles, total miles, so on and so forth. It's kind of like a simple version of a car speedometer, and it does the job just as I would expect it to. Other components, you have a Suntour fork on the front here. This is the Moby 32. It has 75 mil of travel. Essentially, that's gonna be enough squish to mellow out a lot of the on-road stuff without making it feel like you're bobbing up and down. It also comes with a lockout, so if you do like that more rigid feel, feel free to switch that around and have a fully rigid event and level. Your seat here is an Aventon Velo collaboration. So essentially, Velo has created the saddle, but they've put a nice Aventon logo on top so you know where it belongs. I really like this saddle. It has a good median of being performance oriented as far as its shape, but still having that cushion that you look for in a commuter seat for those longer days on the bike. When it comes to your drivetrain and your shifter, you have Shimano Acera, eight speeds total on this bike. I like the shifter a lot that they've given you because it's a rapid fire shifter. So if you wanna shift on the go, shift down a gear real quick around a corner, shift back up on the straightaway, you're able to do that without much hesitation from the derailleur shifting. And I like that because it feels like you have a faithful shifter below you that's gonna hold up regardless of how fast you decide to shift. Your grips are ergonomic grips by Velo. They've kind of been shaped around the human hand that really meshes nicely with your palm when you're holding on. When it comes to the brakes on this bike, this has hydraulic disc brakes from Bangle and 180 millimeter disc rotors. I love that they put hydraulic disc brakes on this bike because it's rare that you find a bike at this price point that has those hydraulic disc brakes. So kudos to Aventon. I really appreciate the stopping power this bike provides for how fast it can go. Other components include the Kenda Quick 2.2 tires. These are kind of a slick road tire that's good for drifting around corners and holding a lot of speed on straightaways. These tires also seem to have a very thick casing. So when it comes to punctures, anything you might find in the road, I'm not gonna guarantee it won't pop your tire, but you do have a good casing that's gonna decrease the chances of that happening. Aventon has really added a lot of characteristics in the looks department to the bike as well. For example, with their metal front and rear fenders here. These have great utility when it comes to going through a puddle and not getting wet. But more than anything for me, it just adds to that urban-esque commuter feel that this bike provides. You also have a rear rack here that's rated for 50 total pounds. So you can take pretty much anything that you would need to to and from work, to and from the grocery store, unless of course it is over 50 pounds. Wrapping things up, I wanted to touch on the lever throttle. Aventon gives you two options at checkout for your throttle. One option is a throttle where you have to pedal first for it to engage, 
and the other throttle is probably what you're used to where you can simply touch the throttle and start from a standstill. We have the pedal first throttle, which is really nice for a safety reason. You don't accidentally hit the throttle when you're getting on the bike and have it come out from below you, because that could be a problem. So I really like that they give those fine-tuned details to the consumer at checkout so they can fine-tune the bike to their needs. I really like this frame. I mentioned the battery earlier. I didn't mention how well they put it into this frame. The internal storage for that battery, I think, evens out the weight distribution on this bike. The weight feels below you, and it also makes it a lot cleaner looking bike. At first glance, I couldn't even really tell this was an e-bike other than the size of the tube here. And I think that's something that's really cool about this is it's a good looking bike first that just happens to have a battery. It's not flaunting that it's an electric bike. It's there to be your high performance commuter. All in all, this adds up to a very fast, well put together machine that I feel confident when I'm riding and I feel very nimble when I'm weaving and bobbing around on this bike. I think they've done a very good job of giving the consumer key components, quality components at a good price point. And I don't think I would really change anything that they're doing right now. I think Aventon's doing a good job giving you those components without making the price go through the roof. So overall, this bike handles really well. I think it's a combination of the 27 and a half inch wheelbase and those semi-slick tires. You're able to corner decently low on these tires, but more than anything, as you saw right there, it's very easy to kick out the back end for those tight corners. The suspension fork also really adds to the handling for me because it, it diminishes a lot of that chatter that can throw you offline and throw your focus off too. The geometry of the bike almost feels like a hardtail mountain bike to me, to where the handlebars are relative to the seat and your pedaling position. Overall, I think they've made the geometry the way it is just to kind of help the, the confidence when you are weaving through traffic, if you need to make a tight turn quickly, and if you're just riding fast, you wanna know this bike is willing to go fast and not have any issues. So overall, the handling on this bike is really fun. I would kind of relate it to the Rad Mission 1, just with suspension. We tested the battery range of the event and level to see how far we could get on a single charge while using maximum pedal assist, level 5, and minimum pedal assist, level 1. When we took out the level on maximum pedal assist, we reached 29.4 miles with an average speed of 19.9 miles per hour. That's pretty fast. When we tested the level on minimum pedal assist, we reached a whopping 65.82 miles with an average speed of 12.1 miles per hour. After doing these tests, it's safe to say the lithium ion 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery holds its charge quite well. Alrighty bikers, we are to the infamous hill. The one that's a half a mile with an average grade of 12%. Overall, this is the steepest hill we're able to find in town to test out how these e-bikes are capable of climbing with throttle only and maximum pedal assist. I'm personally really curious to see how the event and level does considering how fast it seems to be on flat ground. My biggest question is, will the event and level's power and speed translate to the hill climb? We're gonna do that with throttle and maximum pedal assist. So let's see how it goes. Alrighty guys, so we just finished up our hill test on this event in level here. Those two tests were the throttle only and the maximum pedal assist level five. For our hill here on full assist, I got one minute and seven seconds, which is definitely on the higher end of the spectrum when it comes to how fast we've had e-bikes climb this hill. 
My top speed when I was doing pedal assist level five was 23. And I dipped down to around 12 and a half, 13 miles per hour at my lowest speed. So even at the steepest parts of the hill, this thing was still above 10 miles per hour with relative ease. Now, when it came to the throttle, that wasn't really the case. I got two minutes and nine seconds, and I, I felt like the throttle could have been a lot stronger, honestly. For being a 750 watt motor, I was surprised about how much this slowed down on the hill. I got down to around three miles per hour at my lowest. It kept chugging along even if I was going slow, but I expected this to be a little bit more powerful throttle than it actually was on this hill. So what I've kind of gathered here is if you want to shoot up the hill, you're going to want to use pedal assist. This throttle is probably a little bit more optimum for those straightaways and maybe getting some speed into the hill. Um, but overall, you're going to want to pedal if you want to go fast up the hill on the Venton level. Alrighty bikers, we've set up our cone test. We're doing that 100 yard dash to see how fast this bike can go in throttle only, in pedal assist level five, and with the bike completely turned off. Now there is one parameter that might be slightly different for this bike and that's the throttle. Reason being is because this throttle is only engaged after it detects a pedal stroke. So for that test, I'll be doing one pedal stroke in the easiest gear so the throttle can engage, being in the easiest gear, I'm not going to get much help from that pedal stroke and it should even out the results fairly well. As you've heard me say time and time again, this bike is dang fast, so I'm very eager to see what the results will yield. We'll see you out there. Okay guys, so I just finished up our 100 yard dash test. Those three tests were max pedal assist, throttle only, and the bike turned completely off. When I did max pedal assist, I got 10.7 seconds. That's a pretty fast time. It's rare that I see these bikes get below 11 seconds on max pedal assist. So the acceleration and speed was definitely there on the pedal assist level five. On throttle only, I got 13.7 seconds. That's decent. It would have been a lot faster if I didn't have to engage the pedals first. With that being said, Aventon does offer the standard throttle where that test would probably be a little faster than what we received here. Last but not least, with the bike completely off, I got 15.3 seconds, which is respectable considering the bike is 62 pounds. Because of this, it is gonna be a little bit hard to push, but because of the fast rolling tires and eight speed drivetrain, if it comes to it, you're still going to be able to pedal this bike when it is completely off. With that being said, I think this bike is definitely one of the faster ones we've tested to date. And if you are wanting your fast acceleration, definitely do pedal assist level five. Alrighty, so at this point, it's very apparent that the Aventon level is a very fast bike. With that being said, it's important that the level has brakes that are comparable to the speed that it's able to produce. These brakes are the Bengal Aries 180 millimeter rotor disc brakes. They are hydraulic, and so hopefully they'll slow us down as fast as we would hope for on a class three e-bike. We have cones set up on five foot increments to see what our average stopping distance is after five tests. A few more parameters here. The tires are pumped up to 60 PSI, and I will be going from the 20 mile per hour throttle. That way we have somewhat of a scientific variable that is consistent and we'll be able to dial in about how long an average sized rider like myself is going to take to stop on the Venton level. Mm -hmm. 
Alrighty, ladies and gents, I just finished up the five total brake tests. Remember, I did those from 20 miles per hour, and then I grabbed both brakes when I got to the first cone. My average was 18 feet, seven inches. I'm about six feet tall and weigh around 170 pounds. So if you're lighter, you can assume you're gonna stop that much faster, heavier, that much slower. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the braking power on these brakes. With semi-slick tires like these Kendas, I thought it was gonna slip and slide and skid until we got past the 25 foot cone. That wasn't the case at all, thankfully. The combination of those powerful brakes and the weight of the bike helped it slow down in time. And I'm confident that the brakes match the speed capabilities of this bike overall. And I'm really glad they went with that hydraulic setup. As I mentioned in the specs, it isn't very common that you find a bike around this price point with this ni nice of brakes. So kudos to Aventon for the brake setup on this bike. It really adds to the overall experience and performance of the Aventon level. Woo! It has been a hell of a day testing this Aventon level. And let me say, I think this bike is the perfect super commuter for a lot of people. Reason being, it hauls on anything that's relatively flat and it's also very easy and to maneuver and it's very nimble. I think this event and level is going to be good for those who want to cut down their ETAs to and from work. We're just right at a higher average speed than they're used to on the paved trails like this here. Anyone who doesn't want to spend too much but still wants some premium components on their bike is really going to appreciate what Aventon has to offer in this level model here. A few of my favorite components were those Kenda tires. I think they nailed the tread pattern and how slick they are. The, when I say slick, I don't necessarily mean they're going to be sliding out from under you. They just have the right texture and compound for uh, asphalt and pavement. Overall, I would like to see a little bit more oomph from the throttle. I think the throttle could afford to expend a little bit more juice on those very steep situations just to kind of keep the theme going of being speedy regardless of where you're riding or how you're riding. Keep in mind though, that's kind of okay considering the model that we do have. The throttle is kind of a more safety oriented throttle than perhaps the other variation that Aventon offers. The cockpit itself is very comfortable. I really dug the feeling of the grips and the Velo saddle. All in all, it adds up to be a very capable trail commuter bike. And I think anyone who does value time, saving money, and can appreciate a good looking bike will really like the Aventon level. With all of that being said, I really appreciate you guys watching today. If you have any questions about the bike, let us know in the comments below. We'll definitely get back to you. If you wanna know more about the bike, we have a link in our description to a detailed written review where we go over every part of this bike in mass detail to make sure that you know what you're getting if you decide to go with the Aventon level. Subscribe for future videos, and if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. With that being said, I'm Pierce with Electric Bike Report, and I'll see you next review.